Hello, I'm Gerald Lewis. I'm a general physician and a cardiologist, and welcome to another of my health talks on the web. One question I'm very frequently asked by people is, Doctor, do I need to take nutritional supplements? And the answer, in fact, is you're already taking supplements. There's iodine added to the salt in many countries. All pregnant women are given folic acid. In fact, in many places, they add folic acid to the bread. If you're anemic, we'll give you iron, vitamin B12, folic acid. So gen conventional medicine uses supplements now all the time. Certainly in the animal kingdom, vets and farmers always supplement their animals because the food, even though it looks good, is incomplete. And the important thing is that if a nutrient isn't in our food, then our bodies are not going to get it. So what nutrients do we need? Our bodies have developed over millions and millions of years and these organs all work together as a perfect team to grow, to keep us well, to fight disease and to repair damage. And when you have a look at what goes on inside the liver and the chemical pathways that happen there and then look at the chemical pathways all around the body, it is really quite incredible what is happening to us every minute of every day. And to work properly, all these chemical reactions need all the right ingredients to enable them to work properly. Now we've created, evolved or created, depending on your philosophy, over millions and millions of years. And our bodies have been designed to receive nutrients, to enable our bodies to grow, to protect ourselves, to fight against diseases, to heal from broken bones and from broken bodies, and to recover from illness, disease, and damage. And all of these will happen automatically, but we ourselves actually have a role. And interestingly, our genes are exactly the same as the genes of early mankind, so we haven't changed significantly over the years. And just as in their time, we've got two roles. One is to protect our bodies and ourselves from toxins and dangers. Now, in those days, toxins and dangers were much easier to see and avoid. Today's toxins and dangers are much more insidious and certainly harder to see and harder to get away from. Well, the second thing is our body. we need to give ourselves all the nutrients they need for the pathways to work properly. Proteins, sugars, fats, minerals, and vitamins. Now, almost any diet, no matter how bad it is, will provide enough protein, sugars, and fat, but not minerals, not vitamins, and a couple of fats as well. How do we get minerals, vitamins, and those fish oil fats? Early man got them from eating roots, berries, <coughs> nuts, fruit, fish, and fresh meat. There are other communities who also ate well, and they had less disease as well. Our grandparents and great-grandparents, island communities in Mediterranean countries. Now, although the Heart Foundation would frown at what our grandparents used to eat, in actual fact, it made them healthier. Island communities eat a lot of fresh fruit, vegetables filled with antioxidants. Mediterranean countries, fruit, vegetables, nuts, fish, and a little bit of red wine. Their food was fresh, filled with antioxidants, unpolluted with sprays, toxins, and it was unprocessed. And interestingly, all of those areas had less degenerative diseases of today, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's and diabetes. In actual fact, these diseases are rare in these countries, and it's not very long ago since this change has happened. 1967, when Monica and I graduated from Otago University, we had no coronary care unit in Dunedin Hospital because heart disease wasn't common. Diabetes was rare, Alzheimer's was not in our textbook, and cancer was much less com common than it is now. And that's only 1967, when Elvis was the king. This is data in 1996 on deaths per 100,000 population from heart disease. New Zealand up near the top, 127. Australia not far behind, 110. But have a look at the Mediterranean countries, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain, France. France, 39 per 100,000 population. New Zealand, 127. Now, all these diseases, despite the billions of dollars we spend, are continuing to grow. This is the incidence of heart disease in the United States between 1970 and 2003. It's going up. The incidence of invasive breast cancer in Scotland is an example, going up all the time, and it's the same all around the world. Mortality from Alzheimer's disease and other dementias going up and up. And listening, interesting, in 1984, it hardly existed, and look where it is now. And diabetes is equally frightening. The incidence is going up, and a very frightening statistic has come out from the Center of the Disease Control in the United States. They have said that one child in three born after 2010 will develop diabetes unless we do something about it, and that's our children and our grandchildren. All the money we're spending on health seems to be going 
down the drain. Drugs operations will just not work. And the reason why drugs will never save mankind is we throw drugs into these incredible metabolic pathways and they start working in there and they screw up the beautifully designed pathways that we have. They may fix a headache or lower the cholesterol or drop the blood pressure, but they've all got side effects, toxic effects, and they all change our bodies and they change our bodies in a way that is not good in nearly every case. Sometimes we've got to use drugs, and certainly in acute medicine I use drugs all the time. But let's make it the last drug, not the first, especially pre for prevention. Very little data that any drug actually helps prevent diseases. If we feed ourselves and our organs with all the nutrients they need, they will protect us and help us fight invaders and reduce the incidence of cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's and all the other diseases. That's the way our bodies have been designed. So why can't we eat like healthy communities? Sadly, even if we ate the same food, it isn't the same. That was their idea of a fresh salmon, not salmon grown in cages full of antibiotics, colouring and hormones. They ate fresh fruit, vegetables picked ripe off the trees, not sprayed, stored and peeled. They ate free range chickens and eggs, not chickens kept in barns. They ate animals ranging on the prairie, wild and fit, not animals kept in large barns and fed artificial food. They ate complete, comprehensive bread and grains and cereals, not the highly processed ones of today. Now, the ideal food we should be eating is basically fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, fish, shellfish, and maybe a little bit of red wine. But do we and do our children eat this? And the answer, of course, as you know, is no. On the left-hand side, you see what they see on television. On the right-hand side is what many of them eat. And unfortunately, fast food places have become communal areas for social activities for our children. If we don't eat these and our children don't eat these, then our only hope for health is to supplement our diet completely, and that's to take nutritional supplements. If we ate well as well as we could and took a complete supplement, vitamins, minerals and fish oils, we could have a diet very similar to healthy communities. Would it work? Well, the study is showing it might work. In the United States, they did a trial of 88,000 nurses, the USA Nurses Study, since 1974, and they followed them. And heart attacks and deaths were reduced in those nurses taking nutritional supplements. Fish oils have been shown to reduce sudden death. There have been a number of studies in which people were given fish oils. These were given dummy fish oils, and that was the mortality of heart sudden death. This was those who took fish oils. Sudden death was reduced by half or even less. Trials on cancer have shown that colon, prostate, breast, lung can be reduced with selenium, folic acid, vitamins, and a number of other supplements. But these diseases, when do they start? They may start when we're young. For example, they did some work on pilots killed in the Vietnamese and Korean War. 40% of these young, healthy pilots in their 19s and 20s had early coronary artery disease. So supplements should start early in life, not when we are in their 60s and 70s. And of course, in those countries, not only the older people, but also the young people had a good diet from very early age. So the diet plus supplements should give our bodies an ideal level of nutrition, high in vitamins, high in antioxidants, and optimal minerals. But unfortunately, most over-the-counter supplements only provide a very small increase in these. McWilliam and 14 other nutritional experts in a study called the Comparative Guide of Nutritional Supplements looked at the ideal supplements that our body should have. And this is a graph of what they say the ideal supplement should be along the bottom of the supplements, and each one should have 100%. Now, if you compare this with the most commonly used supplement in the world, and that's this one there, as you can see, the amount is very much less. That's the amount of vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin B6, folic acid, and vitamin B12. The amount is minute. These are hardly supplementing our bodies at all, and certainly nowhere near the ideal level. And is it surprising that most supplements seem to have very little value? So if we had a diet as good as we could get and took a good comprehensive supplement, Maltese and fish oils, started at a young age and continued throughout our life, we could have a nutritional intake very similar to the Mediterranean one. We could reduce heart disease and other diseases in one generation. That's a real legacy 
we can give to our children and to our grandchildren. And these are my grandchildren, and I can assure you that's exactly what we're doing with them. So the question, answer to the question, Doctor, do I need to take nutritional supplements? If you want the best for you and your family and your friends, indeed you do. But make absolutely certain the ones you're taking are complete and comprehensive. Thank you for listening.